Okay, but the Ambient Assisted Living Association is actually is a public public partnership of um, ministries of health, of innovation and of research from 18 countries around Europe, as well as Canada and Taiwan, who together with the European Commission in the framework of Horizon 2020, support collaborative projects, you know, to make use of digital technologies for aging well. So our program, concentrates on funding annual calls. At the same time, you know, it's not just enough to bring uh, collaborative projects together and fund them, it's to accompany them with measures like providing um, mentoring and coaching, uh, market intelligence, networking through our annual forum, but also you know, more and more, you know, working on the narrative of aging today as it has evolved over the last uh, 10, 12 years since the program exists. So our daily work here is the management of the program. So we obviously take care of, of uh, managing the whole call management from the development of the text to the launch, to the evaluation, to the accompanying the organization of the forum, which is a bit more complicated at the moment with uh, making it online and it, it, uh, providing support through the, the projects in various forms. The AL program is, you know, making use of digital technology. So obviously, technology has quite an importance in our program, you know, and we've put it also a bit on the slogan, you know, aging well in the digital world. So I think first of all, it's it's about the human being, the person, and all its desires and needs, and then looking how technology can support that. Um, one should neither over nor underestimate the, the power of technology. We have seen that in COVID, how it can actually help older people who are you know, bound to stay at home or in care homes to feel safe at home, to still stay socially connected and remain active. At the same time, technology is just a mean to an end. It's not the solution as such. It supports the uh, really the qu quality of life of older people. And But it's just one element of innovation. You need to couple it with financial innovation, there is social innovation, organizational innovation in a very changing world when it comes to particularly, you know, to health and care services. Yeah, to, to make it practical, you know, what uh, ALS is about, let me just provide you uh, a couple of projects we supported in Austria and in the Netherlands, which is on uh, fall prevention. You know, this is one of a critical well-being area because a lot of people suffer long-term physical and often mental consequences of falling down. So these systems help to diminish the risk of falling or when you fall to get a quick help and thereby diminish also the, the long-term damages. Um, so we have supported them and I think what is interesting here is not just, you know, okay, the, that you put centers in the home or in the care home, but it's also, well, how do you actually bring this uh, into the market? Because uh, you have to find uh, solutions which are not straightforward and going to a consumer. You have you often uh, you know, need to work with municipalities who have linkages to all the adult groups to get people aware of these solutions. And in terms of the funding, it's finding new innovative partnerships with healthcare insurances who you know, usually only reimburse and don't invest upfront, that with the help of social impact bonds, you actually get these investments into care homes or individual homes. And then when they show the, the effect, basically you know, preventing falls and thereby preventing also quite substantial financial costs, then these can be reimbursed by the health insurances. So I think this is a nice practical sample. Others, of course, which in COVID you've seen, uh, devices which connect, you know, the older people to uh, to their families and friends when they are bound to stay at home. Uh, there are many different solutions which provide a number of uh, individuals. Caro Home is one of them, which is not just you know connecting to, to seeing and talking each other, but also providing content. When it comes to open platforms, the the L program as such has not, uh, you know. As, well, its direct focus was not developing the platforms themselves. It was much more, how can we integrate, you know, uh, different uh, solutions 
into a wider ecosystem because you know each solution as such is not sufficient because when you deal with you know decline in mental and physical health there are a number of different issues you have to take care of in terms of security and uh, for the person involved support to the carers be they formal informal so um i think this the whole notion of platform is something which is becoming more in the more in the, co uh, in the forefront and where we provide rather indirect support that you know our solutions get to connect to them be they you know uh, municipal platforms be they private platforms and uh, the, the most important part here is actually, you know, well, how is it linked to the different services which are required? And, and for that, they play an important role. But we are, I think we are still some way off to have the kind of platforms we really look forward uh, to and need to have. Yes, we have certainly, you know, created links to a number of, of, of people working in open platform. And the, the advantage, of course, well, as a, the word says, it's open. So it, it's it's not propriety, it's not locked in, and it's not linked, you know, to one organization who owns it and, you know, and there reaps all the benefits, which unfortunately we have so much seen, you know, in the digital economy with all the big, you know, the big files on Facebook, Google and the likes or Amazon. I think open is we're in, in the field of a public good, you know, uh, in health and care, uh, mobility. And the, everybody needs to have access to it. And it needs to and it and it also needs to be affordable, inclusive. And I think there these open platforms I have experienced quite a lot of experience with uh, cooperative platforms. I think they are developing more and more especially on a local regional basis to bring together the different service providers. So I think there's a, a need actually there and there's also support necessary to to have open rather than closed platforms. Our work has changed quite a bit since the AL came into existing you know, in 2008. At that time it was, oh, how can we link digital technologies with aging? I think over time, what we realize, you know, first of all, the, the narrative on aging has to change. You know, uh, aging is, is not something for old people. It concerns us all, so it's inclusive. And secondly, you know, uh, the, the experience of old people is an asset to society, and being old is not a liability. As it's so, it's more of a change. So I think you know, a new old to be put forward, with especially the new generation of the baby boomers taking a right time now are you know are wanting to put forward. So I think when you want to bring in change, it you know it, it, you have to bring the right narrative which engages, which motivates people. And I think we have come we have done quite some work to work with these uh, you know new thinkers and bringing in that active aging part of it, capitalizing on the experience of people um, as you know our societies grow older. And secondly, you know projects is Great and some solution on the market is good, but you need to embed in the socio-economic fabric of your countries, regions, uh, cities, and uh, and rural areas. And for that, you need a wider system, ecosystems, you know, which bring in all the different players to make these things work and integrate services. And I think the, um, what we're really accompanying with our program is, you know, change. It's a societal change in in which is happening right now and for which we need to adapt to. We need to adapt to climate change, but we need to adapt also to demographic change and make the best out of it. And there's one part is resilience. The other one is, you know, uh, reaping the opportunities this brings, you know, for our societies. So I think it's the storytelling which is really important in the end and to get people hooked on then technology and platforms and all that comes second. But that's sort of, to, I would like to end with that. You know, it's really a message. This is for everyone uh, to engage with and yeah, also have fun.